Cypress Development Corp. is developing a world-class lithium resource in the heart of Clayton Valley, Nevada. The size of the resource makes the Clayton Valley project a premier asset with the potential to impact the future of lithium supply. Cypress Development Corp. trades on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol CYP, the OTCQB, symbol CYDVF, and on Frankfurt, symbol C1Z1. For more information, please visit our website, cypressdevelopmentcorp.com. Welcome to the Goddard Report. Comments made on the Goddard Report and TalkDigitalNetwork.com are an expression of opinion only. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is Michael Rivero, editor and founder of WhatReallyHappened.com. Welcome back to the show, Michael. Thank you for having me. Democrat uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez using some pretty strong language calling the U.S. migrant detention camp camps or centers concentration camps is she using the term correctly uh not really i mean the uh uh the the camps that are being built to uh uh hold on to the illegal immigrants uh have a much higher shall we say standard of living uh than the concentration camps we're familiar with from uh, uh germany and uh, post World War II Germany, especially, which were extraordinarily cruel here. Uh, these people are still being held behind locked bars. But on the other hand, if they didn't want to do that, they shouldn't have come here in the first place. Remember that the people who went into the concentration camps in Europe, uh, they didn't give their permission. It wasn't something they wanted to do. In this case, down on the border, yeah, these people want to be there. George Takai said he was twice put in concentration camps by a American officials who interned Japanese people during the Second World War, he feels they're concentration camps. But again, could these people leave if they wanted to and go back home? Uh, I imagine that anybody who wants to step back across that border and head home would be allowed to do so. Uh, but again, George Takai uh, is hardcore liberal, and so he's going to basically go with the flow on this issue. How bad is the illegal migrant situation in the U.S., and do extraordinary measures have to be taken? Well, they absolutely do. I mean, there was a study done by Yale and MIT estimating the total number of illegal immigrants in the United States at 26 million, and that is enough to shift voting demographics, even though they're not supposed to vote. It is certainly a severe strain on the economy. It is certainly severe competition for legal American citizens who are struggling to find work. Uh, now, Donald Trump, at his real re election launch yesterday uh, in Orlando, made a big point of saying that starting next week, there will be a roundup of illegal immigrants who fail to show up for their court date, and they'll be deported. Uh, I, I, I certainly hope it's not just another empty campaign promise, because somebody needs to do something to start this process going. How successful was his Florida rally? Oh, it was huge. They they filled up the sports venue, and they had another 120,000 requests for tickets that they couldn't still fill. Did they raise a lot of money? Uh, something like $24 million, I think. It, it was a record amount in a very short amount of time. And so, yeah, in terms of Trump's campaign, uh, it was a huge success. He got to rag on Hillary Clinton a little bit more. And uh, so he's off to a really, really good start. How is President Trump doing in the polls? Well, um, it depends on who you ask. And apparently there was a little bit of an upset earlier this week where one of the White House internal polls showed that Trump was like lagging behind more than one of the uh, Democratic candidates. Uh, and Joe Biden is out in front. Uh, Bernie Sanders, I think, is in number two. And so the White House basically fired three of their four pollsters, they've hanged on to the one who p consistently produces rosy numbers that Trump is in the lead. How is Joe Biden's campaign going? Well, at the, at the moment, he's trying to do some damage control on some uh, videos that surfaced about his views on abortion. Uh, he's still trying to deal with the, uh, the uh, creepy Uncle Joe issue. Uh, but so far, uh, if the polls are to be believed, he is the leading Democrat. Why is he so popular? I think it's because he looks like just a normal, everyday guy. And I think Americans 
uh, are kind of getting fed up with having to go with somebody who looks like they're an extremist, whether it was, you know, uh, raging Hillary Clinton or Barack Obama. And I think that's just it. The guy looks like a game show host. Tulsi Gabbard, will she be successful in trying to keep the U.S. out of foreign wars? Well, I certainly wish that would be possible, and she's certainly talking up a good uh, uh, talk about, you know, foreign policy being the center of her campaign and wanting to keep us out of wars. But for that very reason, she's not going to get any support from the military-industrial complex, and without that, I don't think her campaign is going to get all that far along. It will be interesting to see her talking in the debate. What was Tulsi proposing? Well, Tulsi is simply saying, you know, we're we're going to stop all these wars. Now, remember, of all the candidates who are up there on that stage, Tulsi is the only one who served in combat. She served as a medic in Iraq. She's still in the National Guard with the rank of major. So this is a lady who knows what she's talking about when she talks about the horrors of war. We'll have more with Michael Rivero right after this. Avon Resources Limited is a gold exploration company with significant projects in British Columbia and the Yukon, trading on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol ABN, and the OTCQB, symbol ABNAF. Surrounded by world-class gold deposits and mines, Avon's 23,000 hectares Forest Kerr Gold Project is located in the heart of the Golden Triangle in northwestern BC. For more information, visit us at avonresources.com. Media recognition from Bloomberg, Writers, Recycling Trade Publications, patented process for 100% recovery of critical metals including cobalt, lithium, nickel, manganese, aluminum. American Manganese is focused on recycling lithium-ion batteries for electric vehicles. American Manganese trades on the TSX Venture, AMY, the US, AMYZF, and Frankfurt 2AM. For more information, visit AmericanManganeseInc.com or phone me, Larry Ray, at 778-574-4444. Welcome back. We're speaking with Michael Rivero. Michael, what's behind the resignation of Sarah Huckabee Sanders from the position of press secretary? Well, and more than likely, she's getting ready to run back to Arkansas and run for the governorship um, because daddy had it. And uh, so I think probably that's what this, is, this signals. Was there anything more to it? Did she do something to upset the president? Apparently not. Um, he, he, he lit her off there with some glowing words of support. And they had clashed a few times, uh, but it's a, a very demanding job to be the public face of a president who occasionally says things that the public ought not to hear. Is it true Defense Secretary James Mattis made a secret $10 billion no-bid contract with Amazon on behalf of the military? Yeah, it's turning out that that, in fact, did happen. Uh, and there's a lot of that going on where contracts are supposed to go out for open bid to get the best bang for the buck. But instead, because of politics, it's just handed to a crony. Uh, and at some point down the road, there'll be a payback. Can American soldiers, uh, service people, trust the weapons they have right now to do the job they've been promised by the high-tech people who made them? Uh, right now, that is very much up in the air. We're hearing all these stories coming out of Defense News. Uh, about problems with um, uh, the littoral class warships. In fact, those are going to get scrapped and they're going to start that program over. You have problems with the Gerald R. Ford's magnetic catapult system. They're thinking that may have to be pulled out and replaced with a more conventional steam system. You've got the Zumwalt stealth destroyer, which, as it turns out, isn't as stealthy as they thought it was going to be. Uh, it has drivetrain problems. Then you've got the F-22 which still to this very day has breathing system problems from its pilots, and you have the F-35, which just has this huge laundry list of Category 1 problems, meaning that it can't actually fight the missions it's designed to fight for. And the latest one is that uh, apparently the cockpit pressure will pop up and down suddenly, uh, leading to what's called a, a barometric assault uh, on the ears and sinuses, which can cause a lot of pain. So uh, they've also just now discovered that at angle of attack of 20 degrees or more, the airplane becomes very unstable. And 20 degrees is where you need to go if you're in a dogfight and if you're trying to evade a missile. And so now they're saying that the F-35 
If you're in a dogfight and you're trying to evade a missile, the plane can go seriously out of control. Uh, this, this has got to be the worst boondoggle in U.S. military history. It'd be easier to try to fly a brick. Absolutely. Uh, and unfortunately, you reach a point in a military development procurement cycle <clears throat> where so much money has been spent and so many politicians are tangled up with it uh, that it becomes almost impossible to kill it. One of the top officials at Boeing said one of their solutions to the 737 MAX problem might be just changing the name of the airplane so people will feel safe on it. Is that the kind of solution you would look for? Well, it's the kind of PR solution I would expect Boeing to make, but I'm sure that that's not the only thing that they're doing. Uh, they are looking at correcting that uh, um, um, that an- angle of attack mismatch warning light, uh, and I'm sure they're working on the software so that the plane is able to deal with those big, heavy engines stuck out way in the airflow. But, uh, yeah, they they might be smart to rename the aircraft. If the solution was so simple, don't you think they would have found it by now and installed it? Well, apparently it's taking them a long while, and a lot of it has to do with the fact that the Federal Aviation Administration, which kind of dropped the ball, when it said to Boeing, look, you can take care of all this yourself. Now they're in there at Boeing, they're double-checking everything, and that's going to slow it way down. We'll have more with Michael Rivero right after the break. Hi, I'm Douglas Mason, President and CEO of Rainy Mountain Royalty Corp, RMO on the TSX Venture Exchange. Rainy Mountain Royalty Corp is a Canadian-based mineral exploration project generator. The company currently holds multiple property interests in Ontario with joint venture partners and is seeking further joint venture partners for other drill-ready properties in our portfolio. For more information, please visit our website at rmroyalty.com or call me at 604-922-2030. Don't miss out. Stay informed. Receive the HowStreet.com weekly recap with thought-provoking podcasts, radio, and articles delivered to your inbox. Sign up for the HowStreet.com weekly recap on our homepage at HowStreet.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Michael Rivero. Michael, are stock buybacks stifling research and development in the U.S.? Uh, yes, they absolutely are because that cash for the stock buyback has to come from from someplace, and very often the corporations are saying, well, we're going to strip it from the R&D budget because this is a good opportunity to get our stock back. And it's a legitimate business decision, uh, but it does have the effect that the R&D facilities are short on cash and equipment. In some cases, staff is being let go. What's behind this uh, New York uh, state sex cult leader being convicted? Well, this Nixium cult... uh, First of all, they were doing some very nasty things, including the branding of some of its members. Apparently, children were involved. Uh, so I'm, ga- I'm glad they put this guy away. Do we know how long he'll be sent away? I saw the article about his conviction, but I didn't get, I didn't read how long it's going to be. But I think it will be for a while. And something you need to understand about prison culture, there's a social hierarchy in there, you know, with murderers at the very top and people who molest children. They're at the very bottom. So this guy is going to have a rough time while he's in the slam. Facebook is uh, talking about creating its own cryptocurrency. Would you trust it? No, I wouldn't. I, cryptocurrencies, I think, are inherently unstable um, because there's really nothing to back them up. It's just uh, uh, the, the public demand for them. But if the public demand were to evaporate, uh, as we've seen in a couple of instances uh, before, then the cryptocurrency simply becomes worthless. Is the U.S. still poised to go to war with Iran? It certainly looks like it. Uh, we're seeing all this rough talk about, you know, if Iran kills a U.S. soldier, that'll mean military action. Uh, they're sending more assets into that region of the Persian Gulf. Uh, so, yeah, it looks like the long lusted for war with Iran is finally going to happen. I would say probably sometime between now and the 4th of July. Who was behind the attacks on those Japanese oil tankers? Well, we don't really know, but it doesn't make sense it would have been Iran, first of all, because Japan's Prime Minister Abe was in Tehran when this all went down. So if you're trying to make friends with Japan, you don't attack these Japanese ships. Uh, the other aspect is 
uh, it doesn't make any sense for Iran to do this, but obviously for those who want to escalate the situation, uh, it's a perfect opportunity. Now, the official story is there are a couple, uh, a couple limpet mines that were attached to the ship. Now, these are explosives with magnets that normally would be put at the water line so that water would pour into the hole created by the limpet mine explosion. But in both of these cases, the limpet mines were well above the water line, so they blew some holes, but the ships are still safe. So whoever did this didn't want to lose the actual physical ships. They are, after all, very expensive to replace. And the other aspect that made this thing very suspicious to me was that very blurry video showing uh, this uh, speedboat, which there's no Iranian markings, and frankly, it looks like a pilot ship, a pilot boat to me, uh, where they're supposedly removing an unexploded limpet mine from the hull of the tanker. And there are about, like, eight people in this speedboat. Now, that doesn't make any sense, because disposing of unexploded ordnance in an unknown state is very, very dangerous. There should have been only two people in that boat, the helmsman and the ordnance uh, expert, and just get it away from there. So I think that there are reasons to think that this is just more of Saddam Hussein's nuclear weapon and more of uh, Bashar al-Assad, sarin gas. It's just another war starting hoax. Well, I would think with so many radar satellites up there and you can track every ship on the planet on marinetraffic.com, you could tell exactly who got near those ships and where those uh, vessels came from and where they went. Wouldn't it be pretty simple to forensically find out who it was? Well, it would be, but there is a little complication. The owners of the Japanese ships are denying they hit a mine and they're saying they saw flying objects racing in just before the explosion. So they may have been hit by a submarine-launched missile, and we know that uh, uh, Israel submarines have the submarine launch capability. So that would be a little bit harder to verify on radar. Uh, what about Saudi Arabia? Are they developing missile technology that could do the same thing? Well, they're developing, they're stepping up development on their long-range ballistic missiles, uh, and... I'm not really an expert on Saudi Arabia's military at this point. Uh, I don't even know what kind of submarines they have. But I imagine everybody right now is in a race to try and have all of these different weapons ready to go. Is the U.S. still facing a massive die-off of honeybees? Yes, they are, something like 40% this last year. And, of course, a lot of people are pointing, pointing their fingers at uh, uh, glyphosate weed killers. Uh, Monsanto is pointing their fingers at uh, cellular towers, and everybody's trying to shift the blame onto somebody else because once it's established what caused this harm, the lawsuits will be horrendous, and Monsanto is already dealing with all these lawsuits from glyphosate. What about Elon Musk's plan to put up hundreds of 5G satellites in near-Earth orbit and eventually to put up, say, 12,000 of them? What kind of... Uh, Assault, could that be on this micro-life, like bees and insects needed to pollinate our food? Well, uh, it's hard to estimate. Um, I don't think any one source of radiation is a problem, but I am concerned over the cumulative effect of all the radio energy we're exposed to, whether it's 3G, 4G, 5G, police radio, radar, uh, uh, commercial TV, uh, and radio broadcasting. We're saturated in radio energy all the time. And I, I think it does have a negative effect. But as far as Elon Musk's 5G orbiting satellite to get us, uh, ultra fast internet direct from space, uh, I know it's troubling to a lot of astronomers who are concerned that this constellation of satellites is going to, uh, sort of glow up the sky and cause a, a bit of light pollution that they're going to have to deal with. So we'll see what happens in the end. Frankly, if Tesla isn't pulled out of trouble real soon, I think we're going to see Elon Musk start to have a cascade of business failures. Michael, thank you so much for chatting with us. Thank you for having me. My guest has been Michael Rivero, editor and founder of WhatReallyHappened.com. If you have any questions for Michael or any of our other guests, you can send them to info at HowStreet.com. I'm Jim Goddard. Thank you for listening.
Comments made on the Goddard Report and TalkDigitalNetwork.com are an expression of opinion only. The Goddard Report is available online and mobile at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. The Goddard Report is a production of How Street Media Incorporated.